Hi there, welcome to my channel and to the next HackerRank problem. So this one is around the filter function. I've already made a video on the filter function in Python. The link is up the top right. I do encourage you to go to that video. Have a very good understanding of the filter function it really helps you with this problem. But I will also run you through a very brief description around the filter function. So before we go on, I do appreciate it if you like this video, subscribe to my channel, all those good stuff that helps me produce more videos for you guys. So let's get into this. If you have seen my previous videos, I've got the hacker rank problem on the left hand side and I've got a Jupyter notebook on the right hand side, which helps me explain the problem to you. The task in hand is that the user will give us a number, for example, number three, and that means that they will provide us with three email addresses. Our job is to complete this function here, which is called fun. For some reason, hacker rank calls it fun to complete that function that says, Hey, only return the email addresses that are valid. And I think as a human, we know what are valid email addresses. They should have an at sign, they should have a username, they should have a domain, dot com, dot whatever. So we need to make sure once the user gives us the email addresses, we check them and only print the ones that are valid based on some criteria. You might see that HackerRank has already given a lot of the code. All we need to really focus now on is the fact checking or the validating function for that email. Let me copy all of this code and paste it here. I'm not gonna really do much about it, but it, it's easier for me to have only one of them full screen and explain it to you. What happens this part starts running first. So I'll make a video and really explain what this line is. But all you need to know is that this is where the execution of the code starts. So code starts running and we ask the user, hey, how many emails are you gonna give me? They say, hey, we're gonna give you three emails. And then we make an empty container, if you like, like an empty bag and the user keeps inputting new email addresses. If the user says, I'm gonna give you five, we will run this loop five times and receive five different emails from the user. Once we do that, we then will start working on those emails by this first step. The first step will take those emails that the user gave us, we will feed it into this function. And you might ask, what is that function? That function has been defined here. I will get back to it really quickly. Once we apply that function to it, we save it in a new variable. Then we sort inside that variable and then we just really print it. Now let's go back to this function that we talked about and see what it does. This function in essence uses the filter function from Python built-in libraries of function. I have a really good video. The link is up the top right. I encourage you to go watch that one and this one will be as easy as a cake when you watch that video. In the core of this function, there is a filter function. Filter functions take a function which does the job, whatever the job is, and also an iterable. If you don't know what iterables are, the explanation is in my map video. If I put it in simple words, when you use the filter function, which is one of those lazy functions, it takes a function, whatever you want to call it. If you want to call it a painting function, a peeling function, a scraping function, whatever it is, and then an iterable. Your iterables are your lists, sets, tuples, dictionaries, strings. This filter function uses this function, which is called fun based on hacker rank. Our job is to write the fun function. And I would think that fun function really needs to focus on finding the right emails. Well, how do we find the valid emails as a human? We look at the username, we look at the at sign, we look at the domain and .com, .net, .org, whatever. So all I wanna show you now here is, for example, if you've got john underscore smith at gmail.com, you can see that there is a username bit, there is an at sign, there is a domain and .com bit. Now, all I need to do now is to import the rejects library. If you don't import it, you can't really do much. You have to import it. Once you do that, you need to create a pattern. This pattern will be using a rejects library. That's why I put that R there. And the next thing you want to do is to put these two signs. 
those two signs make sure that you do exact matching of the pattern. Now for my pattern, if I put some space there, I need, I need one for the username. So let's put username, then at, then domain, then dot some com or something, right? Now for the username, I will put this into separate brackets. For the domain, I'll put it into separate brackets. And for this bit, I'll put it in separate brackets. All right, what are the acceptable things for usernames? So let's start constructing it. Put another square brackets right there and get rid of the word username because we don't need it anymore. We can use A to Z, which is A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and as many as you want. We can use capital A or capital Z. So you can use capital and small. Emails don't really care about capitals. So I might just get rid of them because everything should be small or the computers understand it and is small. We can play with it down the track, but for now, let's just stick to the lowercase. So then you can also use numbers because you can say John number two underscore Smith number five at gmail.com. You can do that if you want. Then we know that we can use underscores and we can also use dashes. And I'm using this backslash here to say that this is the literal use of the dash. All right, I think this should cover the usernames. Something like John Smith should easily be provided by this. And I'm just gonna add one plus sign there. That means that you can add more. So it's not just limited to one. Now that you've got it, the at sign, we will leave it as is, and we will copy this exact thing and we will put into the domain, right? Now, the domain is pretty much a copy of what the username can be. Some domains have got underscores and dashes, but we will see what hacker rank wants. I'm not really sure what hacker rank wants. I will use a backslash before that dot. I wanna make it a literal dot so that a computer understands that it has to be there and it's a literal dot. Now for this last bit, I need to make sure that I'm only using letters and those letters are only ranging from one to three letters. Now, I think this pattern should do, let me just copy this pattern into the function so I don't need that comment there. That's my pattern. All I need to return now from this function, that's how you write return, is a Boolean value of the match function from the regex library that checks the pattern against the provided string. So I'll put that S there, that gets match. Now what I will do, I'll copy all of that and I'll go back to HackerRank. Let me extend this window. Um, I'll probably have to only copy this function because HackerRank doesn't want to edit the rest of it. So let's copy that, put it here, and I will just import uh, a regex library inside here, just in case. And let me move my face over here and run the code. Let's keep my fingers crossed and see if it's gonna run. So the first two, two test cases are successful. Let's submit the code and see, oh, there's only one test case that failed. All right, let's start fixing this. Uh, I think I know what it is because the domains normally do not take underscores and dash. Let me do this. Yes, I have fixed it. And thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, share it with your friends, hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. I've got heaps coming your way. Thank you.